What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video. As you see from the title, we're gonna be talking about something that I've touched on a little bit before in my AAU circuit story video, but I was the focus of that one was more about you know my journey, how I ended up playing, uh, obviously what came out of that, which was offers and things like that. It wasn't about the overarching, okay, uh, this is what the AAU circuit was created for. These are the levels in the AAU circuit, whether it's gold or silver. This is what I think you guys should do to get on a team. This is how I think, who I think you should talk to, things like that. So this is what we're gonna address in this video. Like we did a college basketball recruiting 101 video. This is gonna be an AAU circuit 101 video because I've gotten a lot of messages, not only from players, but from parents. Yeah, my child is this and that age. I wanna get them in front of coaches. I wanna give them the best opportunity to earn a scholarship. How do I get in contact with teams? So I'm gonna address that today, right? Let's get into it. So for the AAU circuit, I can't say I know specifically the exact history of it, what date it was started, things like that. But one thing I do know is why they were created, why the circuits were created, right? So there's three major brands. You have Nike, which is EYBL. You have Adidas, which when I was playing was called the Adidas Gauntlet, but they had to do a rebrand because they got caught up in that FBI investigation. So now it's three SSB. And then you have uh, UAA, which is Under Armour, right? And the reason why these uh, circuits were created was because, as we all know, one of the first things you do when you cross that stage, uh, when you get drafted is, you gotta sign you a shoe deal, right? So when you sign this shoe deal, obviously you're gonna wanna go with the brand that you've been wearing your entire career, the brand that got you to the point where you are now, right? So it wouldn't make sense if I've been playing Nike my entire career Nike got me to be a drop, a top draft pick. Nike got me here to all of a sudden Under Armour comes to me with a, with just any amount of money and I just go sign with Under Armour. I don't care if Nike's offering me less money. I'm still going to go with them simply because I'm used to their shoe. I'm comfortable in it. That's what got me there. This is how these uh, companies look, especially when you have players like Bron, KD, Kyrie, PG. You see how their shoes are so popular. It's a lucrative endeavor getting these players early. And I especially understand this because when we were in AAU, we'd have high level Adidas reps at our games, watching our games. Uh, can't really say anything else, but they were they were at our games, they would watch our games, right? Or like be around our game elite team that year, right? So, you know, yeah, off of that. So basically, you know, they were created, they're trying to get you there early. They need to get you on their roster so they can secure that investment, which is you, and that so they so that uh in the back end on the back end they can get their return on investment you know when they offer you a shoe deal right so we got to rank these uh rank the circuits right so there's like i said there's three circuits adidas three ssb uaa always when i'm playing when i was playing and still now eybl is going to be the top right it's going to be the creme la creme it's going to be the peak they always have the best players the top players any a lot of the players that you see now that are stars in the league DeMar DeRozan, Anthony Davis, uh, Brad Beal, Jason Tatum. They all played EYBL, and it's always going to be like that. I think my year, they probably had 60 to 70 of the top 100 basketball players in the country. My year, playing EYBL. So that's why they always say, iron sharpens iron. If you want to get your best talent, if you want to get the best competition game in, game out, you're playing EYBL because most of the time, every single roster has at least – one or two top 100s on it. The best of them have what well, I think Team Final had, shoot, probably like four, not top 100, four top 10. So some of these teams are a little stacked. They make these AAU teams, you know, all star teams early, pretty much. But UYBL is always going to be the peak, right? When I was playing, Adidas was number two. Now that I'm thinking about it right now, I think UAA might be number two now because I've seen a lot of the breakdowns we've done. The, the better players have been, you know, UAA. I haven't really seen a lot of three SSB high level players, obviously Chris Livingston, uh, Keontae, but I'm talking about like, they have like the star power, but after that, it's like a drop off. Like there's the really high levels and then it's like a drop off EYBL. They have the high levels all throughout, like all throughout every team. Adidas is kind of like, you'll have them on a couple teams and it's like a drop off. I've seen more on UAA, right? But within these different circuits, you have gold, silver, depending on how many teams is in, is in the event, you're gonna have bronze as well, right? Gold is where you're gonna find your Peace Jam teams, your three SSB championship teams, the top 100 players like that, all the highly touted, the hype players, they're gonna always be in the gold division, right? 
silver division, this is going to be big, especially for you guys who might not be able to get on the, you know, the top, top teams. The silver division is going to be big because a lot of people don't know this. Non-sponsored shoe teams, AAU teams can play on silver division events, right? So you don't have to be sponsored by Nike, Adidas, or UAA to still go to these events. You'll just be in the silver bracket, right? And coaches still go to these games because a lot of the times, a lot of the mid-major, low-major players, they're they're going to be in those silver games. So coaches are going to be at those games. In fact, I listened to a podcast with uh, the coach who found John Morant, recruited John Morant. He said, because a lot of coaches, they're trying to get up on anybody else in their conference, right? So they're trying to find some type of hidden talent. They're going to be going to back gyms. He said he's just walking around. He goes to a back gym. Obviously, it had to be a silver bracket game because John Morant never played sponsored AAU basketball, right? Goes watch him. All of a sudden, he finds Ja, he sees him. The rest is history. This is why I say when you find an AAU team, even if it isn't big name, things like that, make sure your coach gets you in tournaments and gets you in front of coaches so it really isn't a waste of money, right? Because there still are opportunities to go to these events, be in that silver bracket, and get discovered, right? And then, so now for transitioning to what I think you guys should do, right? If you want to play on these circuits. Uh, we got to be honest on this channel. Nowadays, now or even back then when I was playing, right? It's like it's a it's an exclusive like to play on the circuit is to be honest like it's it's pretty it's like an exclusive group, right? Because I've said this before, on the circuit when you're on the circuit you don't pay for anything, right? So regular AU teams you got to pay for shoes, you know, shooting shirts, bags, things like that. When you play on the circuit you don't pay for anything. It's like you're in college, free shoes, free gear uh free flight well you don't pay for the flight obviously the program pays for the flight adidas pays the program and then the program pays for it like you don't pay for anything my first practice i went to like i already said this i leave the gym with a, a, like two adidas sweatsuits th what like three pairs of shoes two basketball shoes one pair of stan smiths stan smiths i swear i'll never forget this walked out the gym and I was in shock. I'm like, wait, this really actually happens like for the best players. And I was confused, all right? And like I say all the time, why I say it's exclusive is how I got introduced to it was more like mafia. Like I was, cause my head, I told you my high school coach was like, yeah, you're just gonna go to this workout. Ain't tell me nothing else. Ain't tell me who I was gonna work out for. All he told me is where, and what time. And obviously work out, director comes, you just try it out for Game Elite. It's literally like, almost like mafia. So like, when you want to play on that level nowadays, I got to tell all my young players, it's more word of mouth now, which is why I say you got to make sure in your city, you got people know you like you can't, you got to be going to these, you got to go to these camps. You got to go to the hoop scene camps. You got to go anywhere you can to get your name out there because I'll tell a story right quick. So, you know how I said I was on Game Elite that, you know, I played on Game Elite after my sophomore year. Uh, so we have my junior year, right? And I'm playing my junior year. We're playing at Wheeler. And, you know, I played, this is a game I had a triple-double. All of a sudden I get a DM after the game from an EYBL coach who was on the baseline of that game watching. So like for these high level teams, they recruit like college coaches. Like this is why I say when y'all got, when you guys are playing in high school games, you gotta be on. I don't care if you're playing a trash team, you don't know who in the stand. So. All of a sudden, I play, I got a triple-double. Next thing you know, I get a text from, I think it was, we all can go. I get a Twitter DM. Um, hey, you know, I was just at your game. I really like how you play. What are you thinking about AAU-wise for the next year? Obviously, I'm a loyal guy, so I stay with Game Elite, but I got that opportunity because these dudes really recruit, like, AAU coaches. They'll go. Like, they'll, whenever somebody tells them, this is literally what they do. Cause they'll have a network of coaches all coaches have a network of coaches that tell them about this player that player so let's just say you're playing on your high school team your coach likes what he sees and he knows somebody who knows somebody who knows the aau director who's looking for players right high level players so your high school coach go tell you know his friend who's tell his friend who tell his coach hey yeah we got a they got a kid over they got a kid over here at so-and-so high school they want you to go watch him they think it could play on the level on this level right the director, whoever it is, who's going to be the head or the, the director or whoever's going to be the head coach of that specific team is going to go to your high school game. Nobody's going to tell you anything. They will go to your high school game. 
and it'll just be a random dude in the game and they will watch you play. And this is gonna be your tryout where they figure out can you play or not. So for these high level, high level teams, just keep it a buck. There really isn't open tryouts, bro. Like it's really, you have to be, you have to have some type of track record. You gotta be out here hooping. You gotta low key have like a little bit of a name, a little buzz to even get on their radar, radar and get on their team. But there still are situations in which, you know, you might be able, they might have open tryouts. I know some programs, I've seen a couple flyers, they'll post open tryouts on Twitter. Now, I don't know if that's for their goal team because they also won't tell you that. Like some programs have eight teams. You might have your goal team, which is the big name. And then how they make a lot of their money is they got like seven, seven other, other different squads in the same age group, seven other different squads that play in, in different tournaments, but the main, main one, you know, plays in front of all the coaches and the silver one. But, because I've seen that happen as well, this is why, again, why I say you got to make sure you're playing in front of these coaches. Don't just go for the name. Because a lot of, like I say, all the time, if you're good, they're going to come find you. It don't matter who you are, where you are. If you've seen with Jason Preston, you've seen with Ja, if you're good enough, they're going to come find you. But like I say, you can always... Some of them, they do post Twitter flyers. You can go Google, you know, the team name if they're in your state or DM them on Twitter. Hey, I want an opportunity, but you have to make sure you're ready because this is an exclusive group that play, plays on these high level teams that don't have to pay. So you got to make sure you're ready before you go into that, right? Again, this is what I said. I'll help you guys out with, you know, once we do the one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls, things like that. But all in all, like AAU, I, it gets a bad rap nowadays, but... If you, the best way, the best way to get recruited to play college basketball in this day and age is to play on a circuit. Like, and that's, you know, that's that's just the truth. Like, that, if the, the, the best chance you're going to get is to get on one of these circuit teams. That's why I say to you guys, you got to work. You got to, you can't be scared. You got to get your name out there. You got to go to tournaments. You got to hunt dudes down that are highly ranked. If you think you're better than them, you got to hunt them down. Go play them head to head. Make sure people know who you are. Make sure people know your name and they'll come find you. They'll come find you. All of a sudden, you'll get a DM. Somebody will text you, your high school coach. Hey, yo, we're going to this workout today. I won't tell you nothing else. Once you hear that, it'd be on some mafia stuff. I'm telling you, we're going to this workout today. I'm not going to tell you nothing else. You better be ready to hoop. But uh, like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Remember, guys, uh, book me for one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls, 30 minutes. We're going to answer, I'll answer any questions you have, things like that. Help you find an AAU team, you know, you know, see who I know, see what I can look up, try and find for you. Also, you can also book me for, we're going to do the Zoom call as well as I'll do a film breakdown that get posted on the, uh, on the site, on the channel, things like that. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time with the next video.